All right. Hello and welcome back to the Good Talkers podcast. I am Deanna Cooney and always I'm enjoined by, I'm enjoined, I'm going to start again. (laughs) (laughs) No, don't start again. Keep it going. Okay. As always, as always, I am joined by the super delightful Tessa Livingston, the incredible Ashton Haugen. And I just want to say hello to our phenomenal producer Jordan hey Jordan thanks for being here today that by the way that noise you're going to hear that like a bit throughout the podcast throughout all of our episodes because that is the what the fuck are you girls talking about sound right (laughs) so Jordan if you haven't listened to us before Jordan is not a voiceover artist okay he's a producer he's an audio producer he knows lots and lots about audio but he doesn't know that much about voiceover and so we sometimes the three of us we've been in voiceover for a little while and we get a bit like 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 we say lingo words and stuff. And so Jordan, anytime we say anything that he's like, I, I don't know what you girls are talking about. He's going <laughs> to do this. <laughs> and we're going to stop and go, yes, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll, then hopefully I'll remember the word and how to pronounce it to be, to question the word in question. Yeah, and yeah, then just we'll notes. all know what we're talking about. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Including the audience. So yes. hopefully well, I can be helpful for it. everyone in that sense. Yeah, and that's why we're doing it, right? We're really aware of the fact that sometimes when you've been in something for a long time, you use like vernacular and terminology and words that maybe people who are just sort of starting out aren't familiar with. And it can be intimidating to even ask, what does that mean? So Jordan's going to do it for you, which is excellent, right? Yeah, Yay! Right. Yay! <laughs> okay, so. Today, we are going to be talking the good talk about how the three of us, and you know, we're going to ask Jordan as well, how we all got to where we are and how the podcast started. And they're like two really distinctly different stories. So um, we all come from different places, right? I'm in Perth, Western Australia. Ashton is in the US. Where specifically in the US are you, Ashton? Los Angeles. Oh, LA. Fantastic. <laughs> and Tessa is in New Zealand. And where specifically in New Zealand are you, Tessa? Uh, Deanna, I am in Auckland. Auckland. Great. So we've got Auckland, we've got Perth, we've got LA and Jordan, you're also in New Zealand. Where in New Zealand are you? I am indeed. I come from the same place as Tessa, Auckland, Ooh. although I don't actually come from there. I'm from the deep south. <gasps> Me um, too. I'm not I'll from here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like associating myself with Auckland. Oh, Sorry. really? Why not? Sorry. Well, no, it's, this it's just a bit got of a bad an, rep, eh? It is. Yeah. It's a New Zealand thing. If you live south of Auckland, you're just trained to hate Auckland. That's that's just uh, kind of yeah. how life is. And when you say deep south, Jordan, how, how deep is deep oh, south? Deep. Well, I'm not not as deep as you, I don't think, Tessa, <laughs> but I'm from Christchurch, so... Oh yeah, I'm from. Um, I'm not from Gore, but I'm from near Gore. Which, uh, if you're in New Zealand, you'll know exactly what that means. Uh, yeah. We don't like to associate. So, um, I'm from near Gore in a small town called Tapanui. Woo, Tapanui. <laughs> yeah. And so that means you're all the way down the bottom in the like the super freezing cold part. That's where yeah. you're from. Is that right? Yeah. That's us. That yeah. Sounds right. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. So we're all from all all different places, right? And so I think we're going to just kick off by giving a bit of a background of where we came from. If you if you've listened to episode one, um, I gave a little bit of my own history of how I got here and how long I've been doing this for. But um, so I'm I'm not going to go first. So I'm going to hand over to Tessa. She's going to go first. Then <laughs> Ashton's going to fill us in on like her background. And Jordan, you can go third. And then if anyone wants to know anything else about me, I can fill you in as well. All right. So take it away, Tessa. Woo, well, thank you very much. Well, yeah, I um I started at uh, Blue Mountain College in Tapanui, tiny, tiny place. There's 900 people that live in my town. There was Whoa. 100. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and there was 150 that went to my school. Like. <gasps> Minute That's so small. I know. It's tiny. Ashton's Aww. face is like what? <laughs> <laughs> so like I, like I a thousand people in my graduating yeah. class. So like Just I can't in your even class, class, right? Yeah. Oh, that stresses me out so much. Like I know everybody's parents. I know all of their siblings. I worked in the four <laughs> square, which is like the tiny little supermarket. So I knew everything that was you know happening in our town. And but like that wasn't unusual. Everybody knows what's happening. So um, I started off down there, and I 
always had a bit of a thing for the performing arts. I was that kid that was like so afraid to like share my singing voice that like at home at night I would like sing into my pillow so that no one could hear me. Are you serious? Yeah, that was me. I was like so like this is amazing and this is great, but I can't share it with anybody. Um, you know that was cutie. I was so nervous and so scared. And uh, when I got into my year thirteen year, I uh, was thinking I'm going to go try performing arts out. And then over the space of like six months, I had four or five different people unassociated with each other all say to me, hey, you should be a speech therapist because you've got a nice sounding voice. And I was like, that's weird. I know. (laughs) Apparently having a clear speaking voice means that you should be a speech therapist. And like, I didn't even know what that was. I had no idea what it was. So me and my mum, because it had just come out, hired the King's Speech because it came out in 2010. Uh, Mm. And so I watched that and I didn't fully get what he what Jeffrey Rush I don't I can't remember what his character's name was but what he was doing as a speech therapist but I remember watching him and being like he makes people feel good like he's got that really lovely thing about him and I just thought okay that sounds cool <laughs> so I applied to be a speech and language therapist uh, I auditioned for a couple of schools here in New Zealand for um performance arts but I never I didn't uh, didn't get into any of those. They they here in New Zealand. They're really like we like you to have a bit of life experience before mm-hmm. you know, which I totally agree with. That's so, drama schools everywhere though. Drama schools you know? everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So they don't want an eighteen year old. They want they want people who have got a bit of life behind them. So I, <coughs> oh excuse me, huh, um, I went and did five years at Canterbury University studying speech and language pathology. Uh, <laughs> hated it. <laughs> And not because the people there weren't lovely, the teachers weren't fantastic, it's because I couldn't find me in it. I didn't, mm. I couldn't associate, like, like we did lots on like uh, child language disorders, we did lots on stroke, we did lots on swallowing disorders, um, and swallowing disorders was kind of my favourite. I was like, uh, but that was also working. Like of the lot that you didn't really love though? Yeah, yeah, of the lot that I didn't really love. And when I was there, we only did two papers on voice, and it wasn't, uh, voice. It wasn't creative voice. It was like, uh, if someone ends up with Parkinson's, how do you train and treat that? It's, it was more sustaining voice for people who have had strokes and disorders as opposed to creating and developing voices. Ah. So, um, so I didn't like that either. <laughs> so I, okay. There's nothing here that really fits me. And, um, our lovely, uh, head of department, she will attest to this like uh, every year, about four or five times a year, I would go into her office like crying my eyes out, being like, I don't want to do it. I'm going to quit. And then I would never quit. And oh. I would end Aww. up staying there because I just, you know, I'm an emotional person. It's how I deal with my stuff. And I just couldn't find, I couldn't find me inside all of this. Um, at one point, I thought I was going to run away to LA and be a performer. So Ashton, I might have met you at some point. But well, That would have um, been amazing. <laughs> but, you know, that didn't happen. And I got to towards the end of my fifth year and uh, learned about the Actors Program, which is a uh, one-year intensive acting program here in Auckland. And uh, I auditioned for that and got in and was like, oh, my God, I'm quitting everything speech-language therapy. I'm out. I'm going to go be an actor. I'm going to be famous. Like, you know, that you know that whole side of it popped up. And then on my first day, I met um, a wonderful, wonderful vocal coach here in New Zealand. Her name's Kirsty O'Sullivan. She's just insanely amazing. Uh, and she told us that she was going to be our vocal coach for the whole year. And I went, oh, that's interesting. And I just... I followed her around like a little puppy dog and I was like, I love, oh, I love it. She's got red hair as well. So I was like, I just, I just feel <laughs> you like, <laughs> so, uh, so that was really amazing. Finished up that year, got signed with an acting agent and wasn't still sure what to do. So I pressed around and I found a place that does voice therapy uh, through an ear, nose, throat clinic. And there wasn't a job there to have, but I was like, please, can, can I be there? <laughs> please. Um, you know, pushed my way in there and uh, and ended up working one day a month for the first year. And then it was two days a week for the next six months. And then it was one day a week for the final six. And I worked with transgender voice, pathological voice, um, mm. uh, occupational voice user damage, like all of that sort of stuff, which was just, it was amazing. But I still, mm. something was still feeling wrong. Uh, it wasn't quite fulfilling me the same way that I was hoping that it was going to. And uh, throughout sort of in the last six months that I was there, I, even though people say not to do this, I put together my own demo tape. And I think that's fine, by the way. We should have a conversation about that at some point. Oh, great. Definitely. Yes. We'll put that on the list. Um, yeah. So I did that and I submitted it to an agency here in Auckland, word of mouth, voice talent agency. 
And um, and I, I got they rang me. They're like, oh, come in for a meeting. And I was going in there. I was like so prepped to be like, oh, okay, I got to put my best foot forward, and I've got to convince them to take me. And they basically handed me a contract. Um, nice. which was just the most amazing feeling. They're like, you've got a lot of range, you've got a lot of skill. Yeah, we'd love to have you. And so I started with that. And then as the pandemic started hitting, um, work in the clinic got really hard. Um, I'd made a teacher's voice course that I was teaching in schools to large groups of teachers on keeping their voices healthy. And I couldn't do that anymore. Wow. And mm. I just, uh, and then I actually ended up seeing one of your courses, Deanna, and went, yes. oh yeah. That's right. Voiceover was really cool. And I've been thinking about that for a couple of years. I should really dig in. And since since taking your course, I that's just what I've done. I put awesome. everything else behind me. I've dropped all my speech and language therapy stuff. I've dropped all of my teaching and I've just gone, this is it. This is what I do now. So this is Ooh. that's oh, I know, right. It's so exciting. <laughs> this this is how I got here. I got here by being a little bit determined in something that I wasn't sure about and just kind of always going, This doesn't feel right. I'm gonna quit. <laughs> That's yeah, kind of, that's kind of how my life has existed. And now I'm kind of here and I'm like, oh, I want to be here all the time. This is so exciting. Mm. So that's that's kind of um, and that's more, your journey to VO. That's my journey to VO. And uh, I'll talk more soon about how um, how it all came together. But yeah, the, about the podcast. But I think that's that's kind of me. It's been it's been this beautiful journey of being really distressed and really upset. <laughs> <laughs> What a beautiful journey. <laughs> I've had this really hideous journey. It's been awful. I've been so sad. All I the have. <laughs> but, you know, but like, because, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm one of those people that goes in those really deep, horrible, traumatic places of your life. If you're able to sit there and just like, and listen to it, that's yeah. where you find gold. That's where you find who you are. So, mm. and I'm, I'm like, I'm all for that. Like when people are on their couches at home for like two months, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm like, oh, you're so Dig lucky. In. Yeah. Dig in. <laughs> Dig in. See what it feels like. Cry a bit. Yeah. See, you know, and so that's, that's basically what my life up until this point has been, has been sitting in those icky emotions going, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Mm, and awesome. that's, that's what's brought me here. It's been awesome. I tell you what, that like, there's a real story of resilience in there as well, which mm -hmm. I think is really fantastic and, and definitely something you need to have a creative career, mm. es especially in something like voiceover and acting and performing where most of the like feedback you get is no, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean no, you're bad, but most of the feedback you get is no, no, mm -hmm. no, no. And so if you don't have the capacity to sit in those icky feelings and then bounce back with really solid resilience, then there's a good chance you're not going to make it in this kind of career anyway. Absolutely. And that's so cool because funnily enough, up until just recently, I didn't realize I had resilience. I was like, oh, you're such a wobbly person. You can't quite deal with your emotions. You don't know what to do with yourself. And now in looking back, I've gone, no, you've you've stuck to things and you've mm. gone, actually, you said no to things you didn't like and you've moved on and you've dropped and you've started again. That's that's not that's being That's resilience. That's resilience. And it's been really cool to understand that actually that's exactly what it is. So thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. My pleasure. Well, also, Tessa, you are one of the most tenacious people mm. I have ever met. You have this tenacity about you that when you want something and you really want it, it's easy to see that you are gonna do whatever it takes to yeah. get there. Like you are gonna make it happen. We're just gonna call you tenacious T from now on. I know. Oh, I'm so in for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's really You're nice. You're welcome. It's true. Well, that's adorable. That's so good. Ashton, you, tell us, what's your background? How did you get to this place in voiceover? Um, I, my, it's kind of crazy because I have a lot of similarities with, uh, with Tessa um, in kind of the journey that I've taken. Um, I've been acting since I was four years old, singing before I could speak, um, just always knew I wanted to be in the performing arts. I mean, my whole life I was doing plays and singing lessons and all kinds of stuff and um, performing for my family, like forcing them to sit on the couch while I did this big dramatic presentation. <laughs> for them. I did that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, that's where I started and, and, you know, just begging my parents to send me to any type of community theater or lesson or any type of performing arts that they would put me in. Nice. Um, and then I hit high school um, and I met one of the most influential um, people in my entire life. who was my high school drama teacher, Mr. Darren Grable. And um, 
really meeting him changed my life. Um, and then, you know, all of us that were his students can attest to the same thing. He was just had such a passion for the arts and, and such a passion for us and growing us into really good actors. And that had a really profound um, effect on me and my life. And, and I always remember him um, saying that, you know, he, he really did care about us and he was always hesitant to recommend a um, career in the arts because it's hard. It's really challenging. And he always would say, you know, if you can be anything besides an actor, then you should go do that instead. Because Ooh. being an actor <sighs> is really hard. It's difficult. And he wasn't going to sugarcoat it for us. Like, we live mm. in Los Angeles. He he understands, yeah. you know, this is where we are. And um, so after that, I went into college and I started my um, doing my undergraduate studies um, and just basically liberal arts. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be a drama teacher because this man had affected me so much. And I just wanted mm. to, to touch like kids lives the way that he touched mine. Mm. And so I um, started studying for that. Um, I got an undergraduate, um, an AA in fine arts and liberal arts. And then at that point, um, I got um, married very, very young. And um, I was kind of pushed into a place where I had to get a quote unquote real job. Right. Um, <laughs> so um I started uh, working in special education um, as a teacher's assistant. And so I was like, well, you know what? This is, I could do this. And so I, I switched um, my studies. So I, I'm working and then at the same time, I'm going to school full time um, to get a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in teaching special education. Um, during that time, I really did not start to like the education system. Mm. Really difficult the kids are wonderful. Um, they're fabulous. Teaching them and being with them every day is like just a joy. Mm. But I hated everything else. <laughs> yeah. I hated dealing with administration and I hated all the rules that they were putting on us and things that just doesn't that don't make sense. And um, so that's when I stopped doing that. Um, at that time, my first marriage started to fall apart and... Um, I ended up getting divorced. And so I was kind of at a point in my life where like, okay, I've lost everything. I've lost my house. I don't want to do this job anymore. I moved back in with my parents. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> and so um, I saw this thing on YouTube somewhere where someone was like, hey, um, you could read audiobooks for ACX and this is how you do it. And so I started researching that and and thinking like, I listen to audiobooks all the time. I love reader. I, I mean, I love reading. I, I read like a hundred books a year. I'm always constantly reading. This would be fantastic. It's a perfect job for me. Um, and so I started researching that and that's kind of what brought me to um, little smaller studios in Los Angeles that offered voice classes, one of them being Real Voice LA. Oh, I this, love, oh, love, love them. Mm -hmm. Aren't they are just fantastic? So mm -hmm. I started taking, this is pre-pandemic, so they still offered classes um, in, in studio. studio. Mm. And so I started taking classes there and I just felt, it felt like coming home to me. Yes. It felt like, oh. you know, like I started to be the person again who I had forgotten you know, who I had left back in college, who loved yeah. performing and loved the arts and loved all these things. And it's like, oh, she's still there. Like, I, she, I just had to find her. And so starting that process just really opened doors wide open to me, thinking that, like, I don't have to just be, like, an on-camera actress. Because that's what I always thought that you would have to be in L.A. Mm -hmm. No, I can do voiceover. And to me, that is so much more fun because I could be a squirrel. I could be, you know, <laughs> I could be anything. Yeah. I could literally be anything. And and it's just, it's so fun. And I just fell head over heels in love with it. And um, similar to Tessa, no safety net, no nothing else. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And so I better just run after it and literally make the best that I can out of it. And uh, I've been, I don't have, I've never, since I started being a voiceover actor, I've never had another job. Like, I just mm -hmm. have only pursued this, and um, it, I really feel like it saved my life, honestly. I know wow. that sounds, like, egregious, and, you know, it sounds crazy, but it really did. It just mm. saved me from 
from the bottomless pit I felt like I was going into. So mm, Yeah, that makes a great deal of sense. You know, yeah. like I, I, I can't do other things. Mm. <laughs> and, and I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I literally, I've, I've had various circumstances arise in my life where I've needed to go and like supplement my creative income. And my creative income is split across a few different areas, right? But mm. it's all creative stuff. I've right. had to go outside of that occasionally and I don't last at all. I, I get physically sick. My mental health really, really suffers it, it like this is the thing that I am built to do. And I never, be, like I'm not a particularly woo-woo person, right? But I know how physiologically I work and I don't work in other spaces. It just doesn't happen for me. Yeah. See, I am a woo-woo person. I love that buzz. <laughs> no, I'm I'm exactly the same. Like I, I tried to be, a, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my throat. I've got a bit By of a the cold. way, I'm just going to jump in and insert here. Tessa's sick, right? Ooh. She's had a cold for like a week and she's really unwell. She sounds amazing for someone yes. unwell. And we're going to talk about that in another episode, right? Mm. But she's got a bit of a sickness at the moment. So um, please forgive the slight nasal quality that you're hearing. It's very minor, but mostly the the requirement to occasionally kind of clear the throat and cough (laughs) and do all that kind of stuff so you don't have to keep apologizing tessa oh thank you i'll do it um i'll i'll just do it like willy-nilly now just (laughs) as much as i feel like (laughs) um you know i totally i totally uh understand that because i've tried to do a couple of other jobs i was a um a therapy assistant in a hospital for a little while and it just crushed me it Mm. just i i I would like hide in wardrobes or not wardrobes i'm in a wardrobe now (laughs) i would hide (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and now it's different, though. I knew totally what I was different. heading yeah. towards. I um <laughs> I would stand in like closets and like th- and just like I I felt like a shell of a person. I would just mm. stand there. Sometimes I would cry. Like it was horrible. I didn't. Yeah. And I've just I've had no. I used to think again. I used to think that that was a weakness that I didn't have the capacity to do jobs I didn't like because I could see other people doing them and being like, ah, oh, it makes me money. Oh, I don't mind. Whereas yeah, me, totally. I totally, mm-hmm. I would fall into a pit of despair. Yes, my mental health would go through the floor. Yeah. Um, and I would I would end up Ill, just like you, Diana, exactly the same. Mm. Yeah, I always said that, like, well, I make a terrible employee for someone else anyway. Me I might too. as well oh work my for God. myself. Like, like, that's absolutely my take. Like, I'm a shit house employee. Yeah. Like, right. You yeah. do not want me to be your employee. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. I am really, really bad at it. Yeah. And it just makes me, I, I had what's, what's a really great uh, cap or end to this whole story is that I recently um, was able with a bunch of my high school friends and we were able to go back to. Mr. Grable and he's retiring. <gasps> and so we were able oh. to go back and like it was his last show that he was doing. We surprised oh. him. He was so happy to see us. And I finally got to tell him and I said, I did it. Like I'm an actor. I tried and I couldn't do other things. So oh. I became an actor, just like you said. And um, and he was so proud. And I just oh. it's it's just like it came full circle and it was it was an amazing, amazing night. Oh, that's so lovely. That's <laughs> such a, such a, such a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. Mate, that's I have awesome. so many feelings about that. That <laughs> oh, is just, all I don't the feelings. Know. All, the, all, the, all feelings. the feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jordan, tell us a bit about you. How did you get to where you are right now? Um, that is a very good question. The answer being, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> well, you just woke up one day and here you were. Well, this is what I do now. <laughs> No, but the journey, the the journey is um, how I got here. I guess makes sense in the end. But um, I've done quite a few different things, and I've kind of fallen into this, and actually really love it. Um, I didn't really start dabbling in audio engineering or um, podcast or audiobook production or any of that stuff until I went to London, and London was kind of like a um like a real good thing for me for my life I was kind of I kind of settled down in New Zealand and bought a house and had the long the long-term girlfriend and all that kind of stuff and then went over there and sort of just really kind of came out of my shell a bit Mm, Um, that happens a lot with people in travel Mm. yeah and I went on my own and I didn't really have anything and I think the adversity really turned me into a bit of a different person Um, I didn't know anyone or have any money or any of that stuff so I kind of had to get a job and I was a builder for a long time in in New Zealand for 10 years, went down that road and loved it, but kind of was like, I don't want to pick up a hammer or have anything to do with building when I went to London. So I actually became a chef for a while. 
Nice. Um, oh, wow. Went into a restaurant on the third day I was in London and was like, oh, I need a job. And they're like, oh, good. Someone just left. You start tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. Sweet. You know, never worked in a kitchen in my life. But I was really passionate about cooking. So I kind of did that. And then um, I didn't really like the hours. And I, I didn't re- I liked cooking for a hobby, but it was more of a passion than a career path. So working in a kitchen is hard. Oh, yeah. To super hard work. Mate. Um, Oofed. And and I only did it for a short time. Sometimes some of the guys here have been there for, you know, 10, 15 years mm. in the same restaurant. I think, man, no wonder you've ended up kind of shells of yourselves. It's, it's pretty mm. debilitating on the body and mind, I think, working mm. somewhere yeah, like definitely. that for a long time. But um, then I was a nanny for a while. So, and the only reason I became wow. a nanny, yeah, this is, so this, <laughs> it does all add up in the end. This does, this is why, this is why you should so just good. do a job, do a job and you'll learn something, some good life skills that will lead to another job. Yeah. The reason I got the job as a nanny is because I worked in a restaurant. So they were kind of like, I sort of said, look, I'll, I'll put meals on the table every night mm. for the kids that are well balanced and you guys can eat the same food. So nice. basically if you, if I write you a list of things, I'll, just make sure you've got really nice meals every, you know, the whole house has got nice meals every night of the week. So I think that kind of tipped them over the edge. Uh, yeah, I'm no not kidding. sure why they trusted a young, you know, mid twenties guy look like a shambles coming to their house and asking <laughs> if they could look after their kids. But I think that cooking really helped with that. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And so that was really fun. That turned, that kind of, the, that was one of my favorite jobs actually working with kids. So um, you kind of learn a little bit how to be a dad and then you can go back to being, um, just yourself or, you know, you can kind of leave the kids behind and go, go out and do your things in the evening and whatever it mm. might be. But, um, I think I worked less and that was, that was kind of took the wheel, got the wheels turning for, um, kind of being self-employed and doing more, having better balance and a bit more freedom to do of time to be able to earn, but then also do things that you really love as well. So that kind of got the gears turning for that. And then I, when I was in that house, I started recording a podcast with a friend of mine in New Zealand and it was a mess. Like we didn't really know what we're doing. We're just figuring it out. (laughs) And I was like, man, I love this. Like, this is so much fun. And then I got really serious about it and started learning about how to do all the editing and kind of did lots of self learning. And then ended up from there doing some proper study and doing some courses online and doing all sorts of other stuff. And then when I eventually came back to New Zealand, I kind of thought, why not pursue this as a career? I've done, I've pursued some random stuff. So I might as well, you know, see how I go with this because I was so passionate about it. Um, and I guess here I am now, I started NZ Audio Editors and um, got a really good base of clients underneath me. And um, and I still really enjoy it. I still learn something different every day. You know, it's, it's great working with people like you guys and, you always learn something from these experiences, like these chats yeah. that you're sitting in there on the podcast, you learn something about, you know, voiceover or whatever it might be, midlife, or I've done so many different things, financial planning, all that kind of stuff. So being involved with all those things, you're just getting everybody's expertise out of it. And it's a great job. I really love it. So um, I guess it's kind of, yeah, how I ended up here. Um, well, we love having you here. It's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's Woo! great. And it's awesome. It's such to a be good here, energy so. to have in the space as well. It's really, really cool. nice. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's ice. And I've got that, I've got a horn now. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm <laughs> looking it. forward Blow to it. using that. Blow I'm it. looking forward to it. Blow it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and that with that, I'm out. <laughs> Oh, Jordan. I, I, Jordan, aren't you a, um, a PT at a gym as well? Yeah, that's true. I, I do. It yeah. is my other. So those two things, the audio stuff is amazing. I really love it. I also am a personal trainer um, in New Zealand. So I kind of alternate my days between personal training and doing audio editing, um, which is amazing. And I also love the training stuff. So I, I get to work with people. I get to help them achieve you know, their fitness goals, which is super rewarding. And then this side of my kind of my career is also really rewarding, but in a different way. So mm, that's yeah. nice. Mm. I, um, I have something I'd like to add just to like what everybody has been saying. Cause I think it's something I've missed out of the story that I told before was that I sort of told it in a bit of a, a bit of a cap of like isolation, but, um, I have been really fortunate to have people around me who have helped me do what I do so much. And I think it's definitely worth mentioning them. Like my, um, my lovely partner who I've been with for five years now, he has witnessed me 
start and stop and start and stop and start mm. and stop so many times and has always been such a support. So and like and like people mm. that I learned from at the clinic, in particular my um my supervisor, they have been uh support from day one. So I just wanted to make mention of that because it hasn't been me on my own in a vacuum, you know, charging forward and doing Never all is of this so, stuff, right? you know. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just, it never I'm, is. Yeah, it's so important just to mention those people. And like my parents uh, have been, like, when I told them I was going to acting school immediately after finishing this quite, you know, big, important degree, they were like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, there was that sense of, <sighs> there was that big breath. And then it was like, how can we help? <laughs> You know, so I I just wanted to make mention of those people in my life who have been so Aww. supporting and like my friends and they've always, it's funny, I remember we were out in town one night and, you know, just having a few beers. I think it was $5 beers and burgers night, mate, so much fun. And mm. I was just talking about what I was doing. This might have been about three years back now. And I was just talking about what I wanted and I was like, oh, I don't know. And he turned and looked at me, deadpan in the eye, and he was like, you are the only person stopping you. We all support you. And I was <gasps> like, Oh, that's was, awesome. It was the it was the best thing. Like because it was like, oh, like oh, get the you... fuck out of your own way, sweetheart. Yes, and it was so yeah. good because I don't I've never talked to him about this, and I don't think he realised how much of an impact that sentence had. Because once mm. he'd said that to me, it's like the the woohoo side of life was going was showing it to me all the time. Yeah. Everyone was being like, we support you. Why are you fucking around? Mm. So yeah, thank you to all of those people because oh, it's, that's lovely. Yeah. Hmm. That's gorgeous. Hmm. Gorgeous. All right, do you guys want to hear a bit, little bit more detail yes. about my background and what happened and how it all happened and stuff? What happens if I say no? I will just move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're outnumbered. I, if you say no, everyone else said yes, you're done for. I absolutely want to hear more about your all life, right, Dana, so, please. Look, I'm 47, okay, and I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. So my story is kind of like pretty long. So I'll try and do an abridged version. And if you've got any questions <laughs> about anything, just ask, right? All right. <laughs> so I, I, as a young child, I was in front of people all of the time. Like my mum says that I was destined to be a, a performer on some level because I just was like, check me out all the time as a little kid. And then in school, I always loved standing up in front of the class, reading things out and showing off projects and doing all that kind of stuff. Loved art, was a humanities girl all the way through school, um, didn't actually study drama, but fell into performing when I was in like year nine. So at about 14 years of age, I got kind of pulled into a, into a performance at, at school. I had a girlfriend who um, was a year above me and she um, she was studying drama and I'd just hang out with her after school and we'd catch the bus home together. So I would read for people who didn't show up to rehearsals or whatever. And so someone pulled out of a show right at the last minute and they asked me if I wanted to do it because I'd been like filling in for that person and reading mm. their lines anyway. And from that point onwards, I was just asked to audition for every theatre production that happened at the school and I kept landing like lead roles and different bits and pieces and and it absolutely opened up for me a vocation that I didn't, I hadn't ever considered Right. I thought I was going to be a teacher or something like that because mm. I loved standing up and sharing things with people and talking and being in front of groups and all that kind of stuff. So for me, the pathway was um, teaching, possibly art stuff. Like my art teacher was like, if you don't study art, I'm going to kill you. But I just, <laughs> I didn't want to go and do like really academic stuff. Mm. And I wasn't super interested in learning all about art history. That part of it bored the shit out of me. Right. So mm. I was like, eh, I think I'm just going to be a teacher right? Or I'm going to be a occupational therapist, or I'm going to be something like that, that like helps people, talks to people all day, all that kind of thing, right? And, but then I found acting and I was like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever done, like mm. ever. It's so fun. <laughs> I really like it. Apparently I'm pretty good at it. Like, mm. this is great. And so at the end of year 12, I auditioned for the WA Academy of Performing Arts and it was a fucking disaster. It was the oh, no! worst thing that had ever happened to me. Like what? it just, I was too young. Um, mm. my, my drama teacher coached me through the, the like prep for the audition and he just got me to do something. It was a bit ambitious, I think. And I just, and then I got in there and I froze. I was like a robot walking around, picking oh. things up, putting things down, saying stuff, right? <laughs> like it just was, 
it might not have been as bad as I remember, as I like remember, maybe there's a bit of trauma <laughs> there. Right. But I can just remember the three people on the panel looking at me with like their mouths open, like what the fuck is going on here? Right. Like that was my experience. <laughs> oh, no. So I walked away from that going, oh no, actually that was just high school. Right. This is not for me. I am mm. not built for this stuff because clearly I can't do it. Right. The first time I'm in front of actual experts and they're like, no, <laughs> little did I know that you hardly ever get into drama school on your first go. Mm-mm. Like it just, it, It's pretty rare that it happens. And I was trying for the three year BA type, like big, huge program type stuff. Right. And they take hardly any people from thousands and thousands of people who audition right. every year, you know? So it was, I, I probably could have like just stuck with it, but at that point I didn't. What I did do is go to university and I got a bachelor's uh, degree in um, marketing and health promotion, right? Which are like nothing at all like what I really <laughs> wanted to do, right? But I, but I went to uni. I drank a lot of beer. I played yes. a lot of pool. Yes. I had a fantastic time for four years, <laughs> met amazing people. It was really incredible. Really, really loved it. I, I had moved back to Melbourne to go to university, right? I had been in Perth. I went back to Melbourne to go to university and, and I finished uni, did a placement at the end of uni, got offered a job at the place that I'd done the, the, the work placement at, worked there for about six months. And by the end of that six months, I was just like, nah, I just, I'm depressed. It's shit. I'm doing Mm -hmm. a bad job. I'm unreliable. I want to call in sick all the time. (laughs) I had an incredible boss though. She was, and we're still friends now. She's an amazing woman. And I went and saw her and said, I just, this is not right. I'm not, I just am not coping. And she was like, I can tell. I actually called your mum last week, told her that I was worried about you, you know? So I'm like, all right, great. Thanks. Thanks. I really appreciate the, the support. I'm going back to Perth. So I pack up and I go back to Perth and I get a job as a waitress somewhere and I'm there for about three or four weeks living with my mum. I'm in my early twenties. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> like just screw this. Like this is what I want to do. The whole time I was at university, there's a massive theater program at the university that I was at. And I just like mooned over all of those people the whole time I was like oh I want to be there I want to be doing that I'd like skulk past the theater and try and look in the like the (laughs) room as I was walking past and so when I got back to Perth I was just like nah I'm gonna do it so I enrolled in this beautiful little theater program that ran for six months that was in the city I did that we did a showcase at the end agents came and watched us I got offered representation by an acting agent and I was like right this is it I'm on my way so I started doing acting work, was getting lots of TV commercials. And every time I was cast in a TV commercial, whether it was a speaking role or not, someone on set would say to me, you should be doing voiceover. Mm. You should be doing voiceover. You should be doing voiceover, right? And we're talking late 90s here. Mm. So it was still very much a, like a geographical profession, right? right. You, you worked where you lived because nobody had home setups. It was far too expensive. You had to go into studios or radio stations for the most part at that point, right? right? So I spoke to my agent, said, I want to do voiceovers. And she was like, okay, like there's actually a bunch of story. There's a, there's a whole bunch of agent-based stuff that happened around this time. And I wound up switching agents. Um, and I'll tell that story some other time if you want to hear it. But I, I got myself a new agent. She very, very quickly got me into a studio here in Perth and said, look, just give her a try, right? I reckon she's got it. If she's no good, we'll give you someone else and we won't charge you for her time, right? Mm. And they went, all right, fine. There weren't that many voiceover artists around at that point, right? It was mostly radio jocks that were doing all of the work and they right. wanted an, they wanted actors. And my voice was very different to a lot of the women's voices that were being utilized like everyone else was kind of high pitched and I was pretty low and deep right and Mm -hmm. so they got me in they trialed me they were like yeah sure and they just taught me I basically got apprenticed I spent the next three or four years just doing work getting taught doing work getting taught doing work getting taught and it was amazing really fantastic and that has essentially been the basis of my entire career I just have kept doing voiceover and every time my work sort of tails off a little bit I go what's changed what's different what am I doing that isn't quite 
fitting like the market or the requirements of people. And right. I just go and make the adjustments that were required. Sometimes it was really quick. Sometimes it'd take me six months, right? And the work would start coming back again. So it's just been this really lovely, constant evolution. And it's been, I've been doing it since my early to mid twenties, right? So it's been something that's been really, really consistent. I have also been an actor the whole time. I stopped doing theatre and TV when I was having kids because of all sorts of reasons, mostly time, but also sure. I, I felt a bit uncomfortable about me and how I looked around having children and all that kind of stuff. And I lost quite a bit of confidence in how I presented, you know, in person, physically. And so I stopped doing on-screen work and I stopped doing theatre work, but I kept doing voice work and it just kept rolling and kept rolling. And it's been just beautiful. A really, really, really gorgeous career. There's like so much more that I could talk about in there, but I don't want to talk for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I love hearing about everybody's stories because the thing that I have noticed the most in everybody's story is, and it's a sentence that you said, and I've just written it down, Dana, so I get it. Pay attention to what you moon over because you were going, oh, the drama students, oh, mm. look at them. And it's funny because I, the thing that I noticed about me looking back is that when I was at university, my favorite thing to do was to go into a pub or a bar with people I didn't know and see if I could convince them that I was from somewhere else with an accent. Yeah. Mm. That's what I loved doing. Mm. And if I had have paid attention to the fact that I loved that, I might have been here. Not to say that my journey hasn't been as valuable as it has been, mm. but I might have gotten here faster noticing those things about myself. So I think if there's anything to take away from this, notice what you have such joy for, even yeah. if it's minute and tiny, because those things are probably going to lead you to your insanely happy career. Totally. I, look, I agree with that entirely. And it's been a definitely a theme for me because there's been lots of points in my life where I've needed to supplement my acting creative mm. kind of um, income, right? Particularly before I became a photographer, right? So I've been a photographer, like working as a professional photographer for about 12 years now. Um, and prior to that, I had to find other things to supplement if mm. I needed to supplement. I was married for a lot of that time having kids and stuff. And so I was primarily like uh, like raising the kids and, and keeping the house and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and so the voiceover work was enough. But every now and again, we needed something different, right? So I would go and work in a cafe or I would go and work in a coffee shop or I would go and do a few other bits and pieces here and there. But it never satisfied me. It, like I was always drawn back to something creative. Mm. And so when I added photography in, it was a really beautiful way to still be creative and add another income stream to yeah. what I was doing. And that speaks to me as much as voiceover does, right? I just adore, adore photography. I love it, love it, love it, right? But even through that process, I've changed the type of photography that I do a bunch of times. I started mm. shooting weddings and families and kids. And at some point I wanted to punch people in the face. And I was like, <laughs> this cannot continue, right? Like I, it's great money. Weddings are awesome, right? But I couldn't stay in it because it didn't bring me joy anymore. So I switched the kind of photography that I did. I pivoted. I went from being a, a weddings and family portrait photographer to a corporate business related photographer. I do corporate headshots. Um, I've always done actors headshots, but I do corporate headshots. I go and do like business branding imagery for small businesses and entrepreneurs and that kind of stuff. And, and that's what brings me joy now. But when that stops bringing me joy, I'll find the next thing that brings me joy. Yeah. Because if I don't have that joy, I lose all impetus or forward kind of movement ceases and I just stop being engaged you know it's a really clear sign for me that it's time to reconsider what I'm doing with my energy and my time and I've learned over the years that actually stopping and sitting in that feeling like you were talking about Tess stopping and sitting in that feeling is the quickest path to finding the next thing you know mm. and I, I I have done a lot of different things but actually the creative thing has been consistent across the board. When I made the choice, no, I am going to step into this and this is what I want to do. That's continued all the way through my life. Different iterations of it, you know, but I think if, if you commit to following your joy, 
you know, um, and allow yourself time to like sit and be still and think and like <laughs> not always be pursuing stuff 100% mm. of the time. It, it's it, That's the best access to making sure you're doing stuff that you love. Yeah. Great. Well said. Yeah. So that's our background, right? <laughs> Any questions, Jordan? Any like <laughs> moments? Um, no, every word that everyone used, I understood. I don't know. If, I don't know if that means that every word that all the listeners heard were understood. But there's only so many people with a horn around here, and that's just me. And so, that's you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm with everyone so far, and actually, it's just interesting. I just love hearing about this kind of stuff, understanding people and why they do what they do, and all those sort of things, or, or behave the way they behave, and all that kind mm. of stuff is fascinating. So, um, good job, and. Um, no more questions from me at this Bravo. stage. <laughs> All right, great. Fantastic. Okay, so do this is a break, by the mm, way. Yes, and yes, I, yes, yes, and yes, I left I a thought. gap so that you can like edit it out, Jordan. That's what I thought too. Right. <laughs> so um but th- there's honestly, uh, there's so much that I can talk about career development wise because no. I'm, I've also got the coaching thing that started in the last three years, but that's a whole big fuck off story of its own. And mm. so I thought I would just keep it to voiceover performance kind yeah. of stuff. Um, uh, do we want to talk about how the podcast started or are we going to oh, save yes, that for yes, a different yes, yes. episode? Okay. Yeah. Are we is getting, this, how, how are we running long. out of time? We're long. We're We've currently been at going 47. For, yeah. And we haven't done Sounds I, I Can Make. We haven't I done think, any of that stuff. I think we um, we gap that for this one and go, yeah. has anybody gotten better at their machine gun sound? Quick round and just whip it round and see if I anybody. I haven't even tried again. I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> Oh, fuck. oh, I hit it the other day. Oh, yeah. Still can't do it. Okay. Yeah, no, let's, let's try that and we'll save the, the podcast starting for another time. Well, that can be scripted chit chat for the beginning of the next one. Well, ah. yeah. And look, what I'll do is I'll go, okay, cool. So listen, we have just like talked, uh, um, I'll, yeah, I'll say yeah. we've talked for ages about this. We're going to cover off how the podcast started in the next episode. Um, but for now, has anyone gotten any better at the blah? Thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, let's hook into that then because I think this one, it's been so nice to listen to everybody. I think we can just cap it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. There's no reason why that can't be a whole episode. Yeah, that's sweet. good. And the machine gun thing's good. Okay, I haven't practiced, but I'm feeling confident. Neither. <laughs> For no reason. False confidence. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Okay, awesome. That, that was, it was so fantastic hearing everyone's stories then. I hope all of our lovely listeners enjoyed that process. We did take a while though, so we're not going to talk about how the podcast <laughs> started today. We'll talk about that next episode because before we wrap up, what I want to do is just check back in with everybody and say who has been practicing the machine gun Ooh. sound. I'll say straight off the bat that I haven't, right? So I'm going to be terrible. Not. But oh, yes. Tessa, have you practiced? No, I haven't practiced, but I had like this amazing moment the other day. So I uh, I was down home with my family and I took my uh, my cousins who are 12 and 13 to um to the arcade and like we were doing like the like they were playing like a machine gun game and I'm gonna have to put up the recording although my phone didn't capture it very well I was like oh that sound and I kind of did it really and it just happened and I like I lost it like I had to like leave and like go somewhere else and try it again <laughs> so um I'm just gonna like I'm gonna put on my acting my acting hat and um I'm gonna bring back that moment I'm gonna what so for anyone who's it? listening, you've got to go back and listen to the first episode. If you if you don't know what we're talking about, we have this segment called Sounds I Can't Make, mm-hmm. right? And there's um, a, a machine gun sound that this person can do that Tessa had a recording of from like a TikTok or something like that. So go back to episode one, have a listen to that, have a go, right? And let us know in like, like you send us a message or send us a voice thing if you can do it because we really, really, really want to hear it. Mm-hmm. But we're going to have another quick go now all right now tessa you're gonna go first <laughs> okay put your actor hat on let's go. Hat. i'm back in that moment there's there's lights there's sounds there's oh it started that beginning, there was a little I, bit of it there it was almost there wait one more one more i can do this i can do this i can do this oh no <laughs> She's lost it. It's like she's there lost just it. for a second. It like I get the initial, and then my tongue can't quite figure out how to sustain that. Uh, it's like it tries to activate and use muscles as opposed to use airflow, like flopping oh. in the airflow. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, it's gone. Was, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Gone. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. You'll get better at this. Keep practicing. Thank I you. reckon <laughs> sometime in maybe season five, you'll be able to. <laughs> 
I'll revisit these <laughs> when I've actually put some time to it. Right, Ashton, nomination, go. Okay, here we go. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh um, for, the, for people who couldn't see that, like she builds up all this anticipation and they just didn't do just anything. Went, <laughs> and it deflated. Okay. Ooh, I'm, I'm building ooh. up my confidence. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. There. I mean, it's better than it was, it is. but it is not close. <laughs> I reckon you're at like 50% pace. If you could double mm-hmm. that, that'd be it. If I could get it, if I could get the, the air to go, like, because I could feel my little cheekies go in and out and in and out and in and out. Okay. If I could yeah, make yeah, it just yeah. go a little bit of faster, like, I bet I could do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Jordan. All right, Deanna. Oh, go. me? God. <laughs> No, because Adam was really confident, so he has to go last. Okay, cool. I don't even remember what the the mechanical process for this is. So, but that's me just making sound against my face. That's it. It's it's more it's more of a like (laughs) pressurized bed everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a pressurized tongue trill, isn't it? (laughs) No, I'm just spitting everywhere. I'm going to keep practicing though. I'm going to keep practicing. All right, right. it just seems like a sloppy. All right, yeah, Jordan. You guys have got the upper hand because you understand the, the I don't know, what is it, the science the or something behind it. The physiology of it. Yeah, the physiology, that's the right word. I feel like, though, Jordan, sometimes that's an inhibitance. Yeah. Because <laughs> you won't just do something. You'll you don't like, just, well, it does this, and it does happens. this. Overthink it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Probably. All right, here's my attempt. Deep breath. Maybe uh, having a cold's going to help me. Oh, um, yes. I'm in Tess's boat with this. Oh. The New Zealand cold has got us both. Oh, yeah, um, hitting that winter. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. That's all I got. <laughs> that was like three different sounds. That was great. I got, if you met, blend them all together. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So do some editing magic, put it yeah. all together, see if you can make it into a machine gun sound. Uh, it's in right, your hands, awesome. man. <laughs> okay, so clearly still sounds we cannot make. Right? <laughs> That's where we're at with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that is about all we've got time for in today's episode. So if you've got any questions about voiceover or you've got a story you want to share, um, we would love to hear from you. We we sometimes do a, a segment called Moments from the Booth, and we'd love to have your stories to put into that segment. So email us um, at thegoodtalkerspodcast at gmail.com. That's thegoodtalkerspodcast at gmail.com, right? Or you can send us a voice note to that email address as well. And we love voice notes, right? Because it's really fun to hear your voice, hear you telling your story, right? You can follow us on Instagram at the Good Talkers Podcast, the Good Talkers Podcast. And you can keep an eye out for the Facebook page and hopefully a TikTok page soon. We're we're still in the process of kind of setting all of that up. So, um, yeah, if you want to find us, just just search for the good talkers and you'll find us, right? We're we're, we're slowly building our presence all over the place. So thank you so much for being here with us on the Good Talkers podcast. We love, love, love sharing our stories with you. And like I said, we want to hear your stories too. So we will catch you next time. Everyone say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. See you later. Love your work, guys. (laughs) Yeah, catch it all. See ya. Bye.